This section details the methodology used in this project, the phases of the research, as well as the ethical approvals undertaken. There were five key aims of this project. The first was to develop a comprehensive and tailored environment experience evaluation framework for use in Ripple projects. The next was to pilot this framework within Ripple Project 1. We aim to evaluate and report the impact of the designed, built and technology environments at Ripple Project 1 on both the user experience and their outcomes. We wanted to identify elements of the built and technology design that acted as enablers or barriers in terms of the key criteria we identified from stakeholders interviewed as well as the experience of the users or residents. Finally, we wanted to draw on evaluation findings for recommendations to Ripple and the TAC regarding future project design and development. The methodological approach in this project was innovative, customised and comprehensive. It included both quantitative and qualitative methods and an interdisciplinary approach brought together architectural and occupational therapy expertise. This was supported by consultancy from specialists including a physiotherapist and exercise physiologist and an IT developers worked with us in the production of navigable panoramas that provided virtual de-identified tours of built and technology design. There were three key phases in this project. The first was review of the Project One background documentation and relevant literature, as well as interviews with key project stakeholders, including the funders themselves, the Transport Accident Commission and Ripple, architects, occupational therapists, technologists and other stakeholders involved in delivering this project. From those interviews, which were audio taped, transcribed verbatim and analysed thematically, we were able to extract key criteria that were held as aspirations in this project and against which we could evaluate the performance of the project delivered. Phase two included recruitment of the residents that had moved into Ripple Project One. We had comprehensive Monash University Human Research Ethics Committee approvals to complete this research and we invited adult participants who were living in these new apartments to consider if they would like to be part of this research project. We recruited three residents from across three unique design departments who were living with traumatic brain or spinal cord injury as a result of road accidents. Phase three, the final phase of this project, was the communication of project's findings through this comprehensive and navigable PDF document that we're presenting to you today.